Hi, and welcome back to our webinar series for Comparison Shopping Services. As usual, my name is Sarah. And my name is Oyvind. And the reason we're sitting here is because we work as shopping experts at Google's European head office. Today, we're going to talk about Google Ads and reporting for shopping campaigns. Now, this is something that a lot of you have requested information on. So, Sarah, let's just dive into it. So, let's take a quick look at the subjects that we'll go through today. Firstly, we'll show how your Merchant Center feed health can also appear in your Google Ads account, as many of you have requested more information on these features specifically. Secondly, we'll see how feed attributes play into your shopping campaigns, partly following on from our topic in the previous webinar on the link between Merchant Center and Google Ads. And lastly, we'll take a quick look at custom reporting and what you can do with that reports tool. First off, we'll go through how Merchant Center and Google Ads work together when it comes to feed health. You might remember from our first webinar that Merchant Center displays the number of items that are approved to serve, disapproved, and therefore ineligible to serve, and expiring. Here we see a breakdown of how this looks in the interface. The red shows disapproved items, and the green shows items ready to serve. If we go into the items menu on the right-hand side, we can see that it's quite detailed as it gives disapproval reasons, and you can get a downloadable list of any affected item. Disapprovals should be dealt with in Merchant Center, so this is naturally where you'll find the most information and details on it. But it is handy to know the number of items that are eligible to serve at any given time, as a lot of disapproved items will have an effect on campaign performance. Here we see how a typical Google Ads account could look like. Now, it's important to note that for illustration purposes, we've invented a test campaign here that targets the US, and therefore this serves through Google Shopping. But of course, this will be exactly the same interface and functions for accounts under any other CSS as well. For now, I'll click into our test campaign here, and I'll click my way into the product groups menu. Here we can see that I've segmented my product groups into different subgroups based on a custom label. And for now, I'm interested in seeing how many items in each of my groups are disapproved to see where I need to put in some work in my feed. I go into the columns menu here and click modify columns. And here I have a menu called shopping. Here you can see four distinctions, product submitted, products approved, products active, and products ready to serve. I can also tick these boxes to see a percentage representation, either instead of or alongside absolute numbers. And for now, I'll also click the uh, products ready to serve. I can even rearrange the order in which these columns are shown here. Once I click apply, we'll see the columns shown in the right hand side here. Before we move on, let's take a quick look at what these four categories actually mean. Product submitted shows the number of submitted products in your product group. You simply submit products through your linked Google Merchant Center account. Products approved shows the number of, well, approved products in your product group. When you submit products through your linked Google Merchant Center account, they'll be reviewed to make sure that they meet Google's policy and data quality requirements. Products active shows the number of active products in a product group. Now, there are a few reasons why a product can be inactive. It could be disapproved, or it could be in an excluded product group. In addition, the campaign or ad group that contains the product could also be paused or removed. Products ready to serve shows the number of products in your product group that are ready to serve and eligible for the ad auction. There are a few reasons to why a product may not be ready to serve. It could be out of stock, disapproved, or in an ex excluded product group. As you can see here, the distinction between ready to serve and active is whether the item is in or out of stock. If we go back into the account, we can see the stats for each product grouping on the right-hand side here. 
Now, this is very useful if we want to get an overview of how many items in each product group are OK to serve without any issues. If I only want to have a look into one specific product group and I don't want to bother with adding all these columns, I can do that too by simply scrolling over the name like this, and I'll see the same four states. If I scroll over any of the numbers in the columns, I'll have the same interface. But the column I've chosen is highlighted like this. You can see it's highlighted there in blue. You can see here that the menu highlights disapproved products as well. That little tiny speck of red on the end there. So you can see the proportion of disapprovals at a quick glance. Finally, one of the functionalities I find most useful in Google Ads is that you can change the graph here to reflect the same four designations that Ivan just showed. So you'll have a time representation of how your products have been performing. If I go into the shopping menu here and change this to product submitted, highlighted here in blue, and switch the red to products ready to serve, I can see that on 12th of October, those started to diverge a bit. If this campaign has had a drop in traffic since then, then it would also be a likely explanation. I've simply had fewer products to serve than I did before. Now, let's see how feed attributes also play into Google Ads. As we've mentioned before, there are six attributes in a Google feed that can be used to structure shopping campaigns or break out product groups. The attributes here in gray use standard and static values, while product type and custom label are customizable to your own preference. All of these can be used to break out campaigns and products in different ways. If we go into the products menu here, we'll see a list of all the items in this campaign. Much of the information is taken straight from Merchant Center, like item ID, title, and so on. If I go into columns and modify columns, I'll find the shopping menu here as well. And here I can actually add all the attributes I'd like. The only one we're missing out of the six attributes is item ID, as that's actually already present. So for this example, let's add a category, product type, and custom label three and four. Once I click apply, these will all show as separate columns in the interface. As you can see, we have three category levels here, product type levels, and custom labels here. This overview is really useful if you've made significant changes to any of these attributes in your feed and you'd like to control check that everything is in order. Now, let's say that I, in this campaign, had segmented product groups by custom label three, and I'd made some changes in my Merchant Center feed to that label. As this is the attribute I've segmented by, I want to make sure that all the items have a value. And as you can see here, something must have gone wrong. Custom label three is empty. So I'm risking that a lot of items don't have any product groups to serve through. This is, by the way, why we always recommend having an everything else product group to ensure a safety net for products to serve through if something like this should occur. In reality, though, my product groups in this campaign are based on custom label four, as you can see reflected here. I can also apply a filter for the items if I just want to check a subset rather than dealing with all 400,000 odd products. For example, I want to check only items with a given custom label value. So I'll go in here, I'll add my value I want to check and click Apply. And as you can see, all of these items have now been filtered, so I only see items with custom label for value that I have chosen to see. Now, as an added bonus, I can even add another column if I go into Modify Columns here. In the shopping menu at the bottom, we see Product Status. Now, if I tick that and I want to drag that all the way up here so I can see it easily, once I click Apply, we'll see item by item which ones are approved and which ones have any issues. So I can get those looked at. And here we can see that these ones have images that are too small 
And that's good for me to know so I can go in and make the necessary changes in my feed. There is one more tool in Google Ads you can use for shopping ads reporting, and that's the reports menu. If we go into the reports menu here, we'll focus on the first two options, predefined reports and custom reports. We won't go deeply into what's possible to do with these as it's a very big area to cover and the opportunities there are more or less endless, but we'll have a quick glance. Under predefined reports, you'll find a dedicated shopping menu with a lot of useful breakdowns. Let's say we want to see the most granular reporting available, item ID. We'll just click here and the report comes already populated. You can, of course, add or remove any parameters that you wish. So let's say we don't really care about the cost of conversion for now, but we'd like to see the day of the week. I can also filter, so I want to see only items that have had at least one impression. And that has had a custom label for value 10 to 20. Once you have this in place, you can also download any customized report here. For custom reports, the layout for tables is exactly the same as the one we just saw, but obviously you don't have any preset values. You can add whatever you'd like. You can also choose what kind of charts you want for custom reports. Let's say that for now we want a pie chart for this use. As we're serving through the US, we'd like to see which states our shopping ads impressions originate from. So here I'll add impressions as our base metric. And as our secondary metric, I'll add region. And what we'll see here is a breakdown on the right hand side here of which regions we get the most impressions from. This is obviously just a quick look into what the re report functions in Google Ads can offer. And I'm sure we could be building graphs and tables for hours if we uh, were to make this exhaustive. However, we're not going to keep you watch uh, hour long videos of us building reports. So uh, for now, I think we'll just say uh, goodbye and see you next time. See you then. Bye.